G'day, Shane here from Wayne and Grape TV, and thank you for joining me at my home bar. More importantly, thank you for helping me bring McLaren Vale wines to the world. Exciting episode today, three wines, because I'm celebrating the Taste McLaren Vale Backyard Shed Crew Pack number three, uh, which is soon to be released. So uh, I thought I'd share these with you as well. Uh, because I've got three wines, I've got to kick straight into it. So the first one is the Sabella 2007 McLaren Vale Shiraz. Uh, Sabella, very interesting um, winery. The, uh, the family uh, long-term vignerons for the region and uh, decided to uh, make some wine. So son now, Michael, is making some wine and uh, dad growing the grapes. So it's a, a marriage made in family. So let's get on and do the wanky thing. Now these wines have been open for about 24 hours, but with the vacuum on, so taking the uh, taking the air out of the out of the wine. Wanted to let them breathe as much as possible before trying these wines today. <clears throat> and the thing I'm getting here on the nose straight away with this Shiraz is I am getting some of that typical plumminess, black fruit that you get of Shiraz. But here I'm getting some really interesting oak characteristics of coffee, uh, chocolate, sort of mocha type thing, which uh, I'm assuming comes from. Uh, nice handling of oak. So let's give it a try. <coughs> mm, excuse me. Now I'm getting that sweetness that you get on the palate from American oak coming through. So there's plenty of fruit there, there's plenty of oak there, and marriage quite nicely. I'd still say to see this wine at its best, I'll put it down for a little while, but, um, but well put together. Right, the same um, flavours as the aromas, so it starts with that plumminess. There's that really, really rich middle palate that you get from McLaren Vale fruit, uh, which is one of the things that I love about this region. Um, and then that, that lovely chocolatiness, um, I don't even know if that's a word, but um, all those those chocolate mocha type flavours um, on the finish, and I'm still tasting that wine now, um, even though I've been talking, and the saliva flowing now uh, because of drinking it. So I'm not going to go through uh, food matches today because I have got the three wines and do need to get these through in a hurry, but. Uh, for those that want to look onto the website when these packs are released, I will have some food match uh, recommendations made at that time. Yeah, quite enjoyable. The second wine I've got for you is the Boronga Creek Wines Out for a Duck McLaren Vale Cabernet Shiraz 2007 as well. Uh, I'm not sure how well you can see that label, but the label is the uh, from the same person that put together the old Edamoga pub cartoons uh, back in the 80s. So there's a there's a nice uh, cricket, interesting cricket play. So the out for the duck goes on the, the, the play um, of words for cricket. So I'll just rinse that one. Rinse the glass. And it's interesting, this um, particular blend, I think, was made some fantastic wines in the, uh, in the 80s. And then in the 90s, we seem to go to varietal wines away from blends and Cab Shiraz blend is uh, pretty much uniquely Australian at my understanding but it is good to see that coming back because it does make a wonderful wonderful blend now interesting here the Cabernet really is coming through quite strongly at the, at the beginning of the nose there, not the beginning of my nose, the beginning of the smell. Um, there's the, the black fruits, the, uh, the blackberry, uh, maybe even a little bit of black currant in there. But interestingly enough, uh, some mintiness has started to appear, which is a little bit different to what it was when I first tasted the wine when I opened it. So again, a kudos to, uh, to those that uh, give it some breathing time 
to, to get those flavours to really come through nicely. And there's just a hint of chocolatiness on the back end of the palate, which I'm assuming comes from the Shiraz. Sorry, back end of the nose. Which I'm assuming comes from the Shiraz. Well, let's give it a whirl. Straight away, up front, Cabernet. The black fruits that you expect, the blackberry, uh, really comes through nicely. There's not a great deal of oak in here. Uh, I would suggest it's old oak barrels being used to produce this wine. But the oak that is there just goes well with all the fruit flavours that are there. It's just part of the whole thing. It's not overpowering at all. Or as Gary Vaynerchuk would say, there's no oak monster coming through. There is just that little chocolatey hint on the back end of the palate which again I think comes from the Shiraz but a nice nice marriage there now unlike the last one I think this one could uh, could be sold for a little bit but it's really made for uh, uh, to, to be drunk sooner than later um, so this is not one that I would have hanging around in the in the cellar for a long long time I think in the next couple of years to do this wine nicely. Yeah, I'm getting those chocolate in, that chocolate in us again. Now the third one, um, for those that have been following Lonely Grape TV, um, the Lonely Grape blog, uh, know that uh, I'm a Grenache fan, so I've gone this time for a Grenache Shiraz blend. So I've got the Selix Hill Wines Valletta McLaren Vale Grenache Shiraz from 2006. Now some will say, why am I having a, a Grenache based wine at the end behind these three? That's because this wine has a lot of structure, a lot of structure, and I didn't feel uh, that it was going to be imposed upon by me trying those other wines first. Paul Patanga uh, makes great, great booze. This has come from uh, from his winemaking skills, from a family-owned vineyard. And I just enjoy this blend, and I know I just enjoy this wine. Oh boy, the aromas on this are just so different to the other two. There is that, um, the black fruits, but there's lots of those red fruits underlying. There's a little bit of licorice. There's um, some floral there, some violets, maybe. There's that floral component. Yeah, there really is just lots happening on the nose on this one. So if my last tasting of this wine is anything to go by, be lots happening on the palate as well. There is layers of structure here, right the way through. Lovely fruit. Um, the wine has been stored in some wonderful, wonderful oak. I'd suggest some of it is quite old. Maybe a little bit of newish oak, but not a lot. Um, and, and Grenache really doesn't need a lot of oak. It just needs to be touched with a bit of oak, and that's enough. Um, yeah, there's just layers and layers of fruit. The red fruits, the, the black fruits, the oak. Uh, there's some tannins there from the oak as well as uh, uh, from the grape seeds, etc. But none of that is overarching anything else. The wine is just so balanced right across the board. Now also with this wine, um, I did try it on opening. And uh, it certainly was was a little bit closed on the nose compared to what, what I just uh, smelt then. And also on the palate. So I really suggest this wine be decanted or left sitting for a number of hours before you try the wine. And... It'll be worth that weight, I can tell you. 
Um, very, very enjoyable wine. It's not what you call light. A lot of people think Grenache straight away, they're thinking of light wine. There's so much structure here, it is just marvellous wine. Marvellous, marvellous wine. Like I said before, I'll put uh, food matches uh, for this on the website. Um, so we won't be uh, missing out on any of that on the Taste McLaren Vale website when these wines will be released very, very soon. So look, that's all the time we have for Lonely Grape TV today. Um, hope you've enjoyed seeing these wines. I know I enjoyed it immensely. I suppose I always do, don't I? Tasting and talking about wine. What's not to enjoy? But have a great week and we'll see you next week. Bye.